Lesson 6.5 is going to be graphing, so get excited. These, these graphs, actually, they're not that bad. Um, we're going to graph square root and cube root functions. Once we get the pattern down on these, then no big deal. So when we graph a square root function, this is what it's going to look like. You can see y equals the square root of x. Um, Typically, when you guys do a table of values for a graph, I'm just going to do one down here for a second, but we're not going to end up using it. You know, we have said let's plug in a negative 2, a negative 1, 0, 1, and 2 for your x. Well, if you plug in a negative 2 for x, you're saying let's take the square root of negative 2. Well, you can't square root a negative number, so we can't plug in a negative 2. Now let's plug in a negative 1. So if you plug in a negative 1 and take the square root of negative 1. Can't do that. 0 you can plug in. We can take the square root of 0. Um, so let's start with that. Let's say take the square root of 0. So plug in a 0 and you get 0 back. Um, 1 is a good one because you can take the square root of 1. Square root of 1 is 1. Now this 2, we can take the square root of 2, but I don't really know what that is without my calculator. So I'm going to choose x values that are helpful for me. The next number I would probably choose to plug in for x would be 4, because I can take the square root of 4. So if I plug 4 in for x, the square root of 4 is 2. The next number that I know the square root of is 9. So let's plug a 9 in for x. Square root of 9 is 3. And then the next number that I know the square root of is 16. The square root of 16 is 4. So you're allowed to do that. You can do a table of values that's a little bit easier to work with with your graph. Um, but let's go ahead and plot these points. So we have the point 0, 0. So I get my pen. Here we go. Here's 0, 0. And then you have 1, 1. And then you have 4, 2. And 9, 3 is off my graph. But what these graphs are going to look like, it kind of looks like, once we draw in, it's going to look like this. If you were to turn this on its side, it looks like half of a parabola. And the reason why that kind of makes sense um, is we are graphing the inverse of an x squared function. I can talk about that in class a little bit more, but this is what your square root function looks like. Domain, um, if you think about the x's, you can't take the square root of everything just because of that even root. Um, if you take a look at your graph, I can almost think about drawing a line here, and the entire graph is to the right of that. So my domain will be all real numbers, but the x's are greater than or equal to that zero. The range, are your y values, and I can kind of say, well, the entire graph is above this line. So all real numbers, but the y's are greater than or equal to zero. So I want to point out just a couple things with this graph, because once you have the pattern down, then these are really quick to graph. Um, you start at the origin, and then it's a 1, 3, 5 pattern like we're used to seeing, only instead of going 1, 3, 5 up for a parabola, we're going to go 1, 3, 5 out. So you're going to go um, over 1, up 1, then you're going to go over 3, up 1, and then over 5, up 1. And that's how these graphs are going to work. Um, for the concept videos after this intro video, there's just two, one of a square root, one of a cube root. So I just want to show you a little bit more detail in this video, but definitely watch those videos as well. Um, for this graph, here we have the square root of x, but this plus 3, that's going to indicate a vertical shift. Any number off on the end means you're going to shift your graph up, not 1, but 3. So what this is going to do is it's going to tell us where to start our graph. We know it's a square root, so it's going to have this shape. Instead of starting at the origin like we did before, we're going to shift that starting point up 3, 1, 2, 3, and that's going to be the start of our graph. So from here, we'll do the 1, 3, 5 pattern. So I'm going to go over 1, up 1. So this will be my next point. Now I'm going to go out 3 and up 1. 
and I would go out 5 and up 1. And this graph is going to look like this. Now for that domain and range, you know, you can think about, these lines don't really exist on the graph, but they certainly help out. Everything is above this, oh, wrong one. Domain is your x's. And um, let's draw that back in. There we go. All right, domain, x's, left to right. So if I draw this line right here, we can see everything is to the right of this line. Well, that line is at zero, zero. So your domain is all real numbers, but your x's are greater than or equal to zero. Now the range, if I draw that horizontal line, for the y's, everything is above this line. Well, where is that line? Range is all real numbers. Every single y in our graph is greater than or equal to three. So your vertical shift will tie in with your range every single time on these graphs. All right, this will be our last square root graph, and then we'll, I'll show you what the cube roots look like. Um, so if this were on a quiz or test, you would say, okay, I have to graph this. I can see it's a square root function, so I know the shape is like this. It's a 1, 3, 5 pattern. But I have a plus 4 and a minus 2 to think about. Um, do you see how this plus 4 is underneath the square root symbol with the x? So we consider that to be in with the x, which means that's going to be a horizontal shift. But remember, tricky x's. So instead of shifting to the right because it's a plus, we're going to go to the left 4. And then this number off on the end will always be a vertical shift. That's very straightforward. We're going to go down 2 because that's a negative. So normally, starting at the origin, we're going to shift to the left 4, 1, 2, 3, 4, and down 2. And that is going to be the starting point for our graph. From here, do your 1, 3, 5 pattern. So I go out 1, up 1. Then I go out 3, up 1. And now I'm going to go out 5 and up 1. And that's what our graph, square root graph, is going to look like. See how nice these are and quick. Not a lot of math. We just have to kind of know what the graphs look like. So your domain, remember, this is going to be, let me draw in those lines. The entire graph is to the right of this line. So where is this line? That line's at a negative 4. So your domain is all real numbers, but those x's are all greater than or equal to that negative 4. Now if I think about for the y's, up and down, everything is above what line? Here is the line that everything is above. And that's at a negative 2. So your range, all real numbers, but those y's are all greater than or equal to a negative 2. Again, you can see our horizontal shift was to the left 4, so our, that showed up in our domain, negative 4, and we shifted down 2, and that showed up in our range, negative 2. All right, here's a cube root of x graph. Um, this is going to have a different shape than your square root of x. This is the inverse of the x cubed, y equals x cubed graph. Um, again. Uh, the way we started the last one, um, let's pick x values that work for us. I'm going to use a table of values where I can plug in an x and I know the cube root. I'm actually going to start with um, 0. I'll just put the 0 in the middle because I know that the cube root of 0 is 0. So if I think on the positive side, the next number that I know the cube root of is 1. Cube root of 1 is 1. I also know that the cube root of 8, if I plug in an 8 for x, I get back a 2. So those points are going to be nice for me to plot. Now let me think about the negative side, because you can take cube roots of negative numbers. So on the negative side, I know that the cube root of a negative 1 is negative 1. I know the cube root of a negative 8 is negative 2. So now I've got some nice points to plot over here on the graph. Um, we have negative 8, negative 2, which is actually off my graph right here. Negative 1, negative 1, 0, 0, um, 1, 1, right there, and then 8, 2. So this graph is going to look like this.
So this table of values that I did just to show you what it looks like, um, we don't have to do that table every single time because once we know the pattern, we'll just plot the points with the pattern. You know your square root function had a 1, 3, 5 pattern. A cube root function has a 1, 7 pattern. And so what that means is if you start, your starting point's here at the origin in the middle. So I'm going to go um, out 1 for this 1 and up 1. You always go up 1. Then I'm going to go out 7 and up 1. And that's where that point's going to be located. Then I go back to the middle. And I'm going to go to the left 1 and down 1. And then to the left 7 and down 1. So you're always going out 1 and then 7 in each direction. All right, domain on these, as you can see, your graph will continue every for, for forever blah, to the right, and it will continue forever to the left. So your domain will be all real numbers. And then your range, it's kind of hard to tell, but, you know, this eventually is going to be working its way higher and higher and higher, you know, as you get further and further out on your x-axis. Um, so you will eventually hit every single positive y value and every single positive negative y value. That just made no sense, but um, so your range is all real numbers. So on these graphs for cube root, domain and range, all real numbers, you don't have any restrictions on what those values will be. So I just want to run through this so that we can um, look at the pattern again of these graphs. This minus 2 on the end, that's a vertical shift, so you're going to go down 2. And there's no horizontal shift. So from the origin, I'm just going to go down 2, and that's going to be my starting point. So this is that middle point. Now I have to go 1, 7 in each direction. So I'm going to go out 1, that's the 1, and up 1. And now I have to go out 7, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, and up 1. That's going to put me right there. I have to go 1, 7 in each direction to the left, so I go back to my middle and I'm going to go to the left 1 and down 1. And then I'm going to go to the left 7, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, and down 1. Oops. And there's our graph. It just has been shifted down um, two spots. Domain and range are all real numbers on your cube root graphs. All right, this will be our last cube root graph. And then definitely make sure you watch the other two videos just because those might have a little bit more detail. So um, you don't want don't to cut corners and miss things. Um, when you go to graph something like this on the test, when they're all thrown together, you'd say, oh, look at this. I have to grab a cube root function. So we pay attention to the root. And then we say, oh, look at that plus 2 in there. Because it's in with the x, that's going to indicate a horizontal shift. Tricky x, that plus 2 means we're actually going to shift to the left 2. And then as you can see, we don't have any numbers off on the end, so there's no vertical shift. So... From the origin, we're going to go to the left 2, and that is going to be the start of our graph. Right here. From here, you're going to do your 1, 7 pattern. So I'm going to go out 1 and up 1. Then I'm going to go out 7, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, and up 1. And then you, f go, then you go back to the center, your first point. You're going to go out 1 to the left 1 and down 1. And then out 7, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, and down 1. And then you can draw in your graph. And then what will our square root and cube root function, or domain, blah, what will our domain and range be for cube root functions? Those will always be the same, all real numbers, all real numbers. And that's it. If you can kind of remember, not kind of, but if you can remember what these graphs look like and remember the pattern for, um, for the graphs, then these are very quick and hopefully your favorite graphs so far.